Good morning. Today I'm going to give you an IR spectroscopy tutorial. Re recall that IR stands for infrared, so we're looking at the infrared light as we talked about in class. So let's pause for a moment. So here we have a thermo Nicolet IS5 infrared spectrophotometer. Uh, this is one of a newer version of kind of equipment that we have here in our labs at Campbellsville University. Um, and it is very multifunctional. I'm going to first show you how using this and a computer, sol computer and software we have here called Omnic, um, we're going to be able to um, prepare a salt plate, a sodium chloride salt plate, um, and then run the spectrum. Okay, so here we have a couple of um, sodium chloride salt plates um, and a sample holder with three nuts to screw in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a drop of, in this case I'm going to use ethyl acetate as our um, analyte. I'm going to add a drop of that to one of the salt plates. Alright, so let's just do a drop or two here. Try to get it sort of in the center. Probably overdid it there. I'm going to put the other salt plate on. Sort of make a wafer. As you can see here, I secured the two salt plates within the, the sample holder. Uh, trying to be sure to keep my fingerprints off, off the uh, salt plate. So now we're going to move over to back to the workstation. So before we collect our spectrum, I want to review the structure of ethyl acetate. So we see here a skeletal structure on top and then a full structure for ethyl acetate and ester. So we should re recall that we've got a carbon-oxygen double bond as well as a carbon-oxygen single bond and some sp3 hybridized carbons with hydrogens attached to them that we should be able to see in the IR spectrum. We'll also see some CC bond, single bonds and some um, stretching frequencies and then the relative uh, bends and twists in the fingerprint region. Okay, so now I have the Omnic software opened up already on the computer, and I went ahead and collected what we have to call, what we collect is a background. Um, before you set, start collecting spectrum for the day, um, it's always a good idea, actually in between spectra, to collect a background spectrum. Now, on this instrument, which right now we have in the transmission cell, um, in this instrument, we do not have right now any uh, inert gas uh, purging, which is usually a good idea. So what we see is not a blank spectrum entirely because we see some carbon dioxide and water-related peaks. Um, this probably won't be a problem here, but in some cases it is. If so, especially if those are um, part of your system. So I'm just going to. Um, say that this is okay and uh, we'll get ready to run spectrum. So after having collected my background spectrum, I'm gonna, I've loaded my sample cell into uh, the transmission cell into the appropriate sort of place where the light's going to shine through the sample. I'm going to close the lid here and then I'm going to go to the software and I'm going to tell it to collect a sample. And right now I'm not going to give it any, any special name. It's going to, I could call it ethyl acetate or whatever. But I'm just going to leave it alone, and then I'm going to tell it to go ahead and collect the spectrum. So uh, this is going to collect 16 scans here. And interestingly, we're not seeing a whole lot on the NACL plate right now. Um, now, depending on what kind of software you use, things could be a little bit different if you're looking at it. The different piece of software. So I'm going to collect 16 scans right now. It's showing it in absorbance mode, not transmission mode. I'm going to tell it to. I don't want more spec more scans. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to add that to the window, and then I'm going to go because we're in absorbance mode. We typically want to look at it in transmission mode. You can notice the y-axis absorbance. 
I'm going to tell it to analyze or process that transmiss transmittance. One flaw of the NACL plate is that the um, the window of optical transparency is not the full spectrum. So typically, there's a peak around you know 400 and something, as we see here. So if I just narrow this window a little bit, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to kind of tell it to narrow this. So I'm going to say view display limits, and I'm going to tell it to go say 500 here. Okay, and then I'm going to go full scale. Actually, let's go view. Let's make this 600 because I'm not really thinking there's going to be much down that way. The scale. Now I can see a little bit more there. Um, unfortunately, for the spectrum, things aren't really jump, jumping out as they should be. Right? So if we go back to thinking about our molecule with a carbon oxygen double bond, carbon oxygen single bond, some CH bonds. Um, this spectrum, unfortunately, is a little less than desirable here. Let's pause. So now I went ahead and I did this fine peaks here. We see up on the top tab in order to label the peaks because that's kind of important to find the precise uh, wave number that are listed here. And I'm not going to go ahead and do any more with this other than to show you, point out here, um, the carbon dioxide peak at around 2361 is just from background CO2. There shouldn't be any OH peak. There is a little tiny peak around 3500 showing up. That could be some advantageous water. Um, there is the CH bonds, the SP3 hybridized. I can kind of see those don't have a, in this case right now, don't have a label on them. But we can clearly see where they are, just south of 3000. And then at 1743 peak, is our carbonyl peak, although it tends should be tend to be a lot stronger than it is. Um, probably more of a feature of that long tail at five four hundred and seventy or so uh, wave numbers here. So um, this is just one type of IR spectra um, running it using a NaCl salt plate. I'm going to show you in the next video how to prepare a potassium bromide pellet to run a sample.